Today we're going to be learning about finding the squares, cubes, and roots of decimal fractions. We're going to start off by just reminding you about the square and cube numbers that you should hopefully know by now that will be helpful to you when you're doing this section. Okay, so now let's go and have a look at squaring and cubing decimal fractions, finding the squares and cubes of decimal fractions. Now what we've already learned about multiplication for decimal fractions is going to help us in this section and this actually is something that we have already touched on earlier in the year as well is finding the squares and cubes of decimal fractions so you may remember it from them from then as well okay but just to remind you when you are multiplying decimal fractions together you multiply the number part of the decimal fractions with by and you ignore the actual decimal part of it and then you see how many decimal places there are and your product needs to have that same number of decimal places. So just remember that for what we're going to be doing uh, in these examples over here. So first, the first example we're going to do is 0 0.03 squared. Now you need to remember that when you're squaring a number, what it actually means is that you're multiplying that same number by itself. Okay, so this means 0 0.03 multiplied by another 0 0.03. So the two tells us how many of them we're multiplying together. We're multiplying two of them together. Okay, so now, just like what we were doing when we were multiplying decimal fractions, is we can say, well, three times three is nine, which we could have worked out by saying three squared is nine. Okay, so three times three is nine. And then I need to see how many decimal places are there all together. So here I've got one, two, three, four. So there are four decimal places all together. Okay, so that means I'm going to have nine and I need to have four decimal places. Nine is one digit. I need four digits for my decimal places. So I need to have three extra digits that are going to be folded with zeros. So it's going to be zero comma and then three zeros and then the nine. So that gives me 0, 0.0009 as the product of 0 0.03 and 0 0.03, which is 0 0.3 squared. Okay, but now obviously we don't want to have to do this step every single time. We want to be able to jump straight from there to there. So let's see how we would do that. So 0 0.3 or 0 0.03 squared, I can work that out straight away by saying, okay, well, I know that three squared is nine okay so three squared is nine so just like i had over there three squared is nine okay now how do i know how many decimal places i need to have over here i counted i said one two three four that gives me four decimal places but if i'm not writing it out like that i can't count it in that same way but remember when you're squaring something you're multiplying the same thing together so if the if this one has two decimal places the other one that I multiply with it will also have two, de two decimal places because they're identical to each other. So what I can do is if I'm squaring, I can say, well, there's going to be two of these. So I'm going to multiply the number of decimal places by two. So there are two decimal places. And we need to multiply it by two, which gives us four decimal places. So that's how many decimal places we need to have in our answer is four decimal places. So now I know that three squared is nine and I need to have four decimal places. Nine is only one digit. I need four digits after the comma. So it's going to be zero comma and then I need four digits. Three of them are going to have to be zeros and then my nine. So I get the same answer as I had over there, but I don't need to write out the multiplication. I can go straight to it by looking at how many decimal places I have to start with. If I'm squaring it, I'm going to double the number of decimal places because there are two of these which are identical being multiplied together. So if this one has two decimal places, the other one will also have two decimal places and I would add those together. That would give me four decimal places. So I just need to multiply the number of decimal places by two. And then I just square, because I'm squaring over here, I need to square the, the number part of my decimal fraction without looking at the rest of the decimal, just looking at the three. I'm just going to square the three and that gives me nine. So that's what we're going to do for that example. Now let's have a look at another example. It's very similar, but this one we are raising to the power of three. So we're going to have zero comma zero three, but this time we're cubing it. Now the same concept is going to apply as what we did over there, but just let's just have a look at it the long way around quickly. So remember when we cube it, it means we're multiplying three of them together. So I'm going to have zero comma zero three, times 0, 0,03 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 times 0,
times 0, 0, 3. Okay, so there are three of these that I'm multiplying together. Now, 3 times 3 times 3, or 3 cubed, because I'm cubing it, is 27. Okay, but now how many decimal places do I need? I have got over here 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 decimal places. So I need to have six decimal places, and I've got 27 that needs to be at the end of those decimal places. So I need to fill in all the extra spaces with zeros. So this is two digits. I need six digits after my comma, so I need to fill in four zeros. So it's going to be zero, comma, and then zero, 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 two, seven. So that gives me one, two, three, four, five, six decimal places, which is what I need. So 0 0.03 cubed is the same as 0 0.000027. Okay, so let's quickly have a look at the quick way of doing this where we don't have to write the whole thing out. So if I go 0, 0,03 and I cube it, first of all, I'm going to take the 3, which is ignoring all the zeros and everything, and I'm going to cube that. So I'm going to have 3 cubed is 27, and then I need to work out how to get the number of decimal places. So just like what I did over here, where I said, I'm going to multiply the decimal places here by 2, because I was squaring it, meaning that I'm multiplying 2 of them together. Here, I'm multiplying 3 of them together, so I'm going to multiply the number of decimal places by 3 instead. So my decimal places at the moment, there are 2 of them. So I have 2 decimal places but I'm going to multiply it by 3 because I'm actually multiplying 3 identical things together and each of them has 2 decimal places. So I'm multiplying that by 3 and that means that I have 6 decimal places that I need to have in my final answer. So I'm going to have 6 decimal places. The last 2 will be the 2 and the 7. But I need to fill in the rest of them with zeros. So it's going to be 0, 0,000027. 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, so the same answer but without having to write out the whole thing. So when we're finding the square or the cube of a decimal fraction, first thing we're going to do is work out what the square or the cube is of the number that doesn't have the zeros and stuff involved. So we're just in this case, we're finding the square or the cube of the, of the three, okay? Then we need to work out how many decimal places we need to have in our answer. By taking the number of decimal places in the fraction you've been given and multiplying it by if you're squaring, you multiply it by 2. If you're cubing it, you multiply it by 3. So you're multiplying it by whatever the exponent is, okay? Because that tells you how many of them you're multiplying together, and each of them has that same amount of decimal places, which you would then have to add all up. Okay, so we're going to just take the two decimal places and multiply it by 3 if we're cubing, or over here, we multiply those two decimal places by, or here, multiply those two decimal places by 2 if we are squaring. Okay, and that's how we do the the cubing and squaring. So now I'm going to give you a few that you're going to work on for yourself. Right, so this first one, you've got 0 0.7 squared. I'm going to give you 30 seconds to work this out. Okay, so let's go through that. So over here, first of all, we're squaring it. So I'm going to find 7 squared. 7 squared is 49. Okay, now we need to work out how many decimal places we need. Now, in the one we've been given, we had one decimal place. I need to multiply 1 by 2 because I'm squaring it. So that means I'm going to end up with 2 decimal places altogether. because it was 1 times 2. Okay, so now I'm going to take this and put it together to get my answer. So I've got two digits over here, and I need to have two decimal places. So both of those are going to be my decimal places, and I don't have any extra digits that I need as decimal places. So I'm going to have just 0, 0,49. So that's what you should have got for question A. Right, question B. Here you're working out 
0.05 cubed, and I'm going to give you three seconds for this one as well. Okay, so let's go through that. So first of all, in 0 0.05 cubed, I'm going to be cubing the five. So five cubed, you should know, is 125. Okay, then the number of decimal places. Over here, I've been given two decimal places, and because I'm cubing it, I'm going to multiply the two decimal places by three. So it's going to be two times three, which is six decimal places. That's how many I need to have in my final answer. Okay, so now this over here is three digits. I need six decimal places. These are going to be the last three digits of those six. So I need to add in three zeros before that. So I'm going to have zero, comma, and then zero, 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 one, two, five. Okay, so that's what we should have got for question B. Question C. Okay, I'm going to give you 30 seconds for this one as well. Okay, so let's go through that one. So in this one, first of all, you had to remember that when you cube a negative, remember when you raise a negative to an odd exponent, it stays negative. So this is going to be negative. Okay, it doesn't matter what else we have there, we know it needs to be negative. Right, now, 4 cubed is 64. And the number of decimal places in this decimal fraction over here, I have got three decimal places, and I'm cubing it, which means I'm going to multiply the three by three to find out how many decimal places I need to have in my answer. So it's going to be three times three, this is the three that I've already got, times three because I'm cubing it, gives me uh, nine decimal places. Okay, so over here, four cubed is 64, that is two digits. I need to have nine decimal places, which means I need an extra seven digits. So those extra seven digits are going to be zeros. So I need to have zero, comma, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven zeros, and then the six and the four. And that gives me one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine decimal places altogether. Okay, so that's what you should get for question C. Again, remember when you are cubing, when you're raising a negative number to a, an odd exponent, it stays negative. Okay, and then in the next one, over here, we've got negative 1.2, and we are squaring that. I'm going to give you th 30 seconds for this one as well. Okay, so let's go through that example. So over here, we've got negative 1.2 squared. Now remember, when you raise a negative number to an even exponent, it's going to be positive. So that one was negative, but this one is going to change to positive because the exponent is even. Okay, so now I'm going to have 1.2, and I need to square it. So if I ignore the, my, the comma, that's 12. So I'm squaring 12. So I've got 12 squared is 144. Okay, you should know that. Now, I need to work out how many decimal places. So over here, I've got one decimal place. 
and I'm squaring it, so I'm going to multiply that by 2 to find out how many decimal places I need in my answer. So that's going to be 2 decimal places. So now I need to put that together. So I'm, if I have 2 decimal places in my answer, but this is more than 2 digits, then my comma is going to go in front of the last two digits over here. So the comma is going to go in front of this four over there, after the one, before the four, between the one and the four. So I need to have one comma four, four. So I need to take this and make sure that I only have two decimal places with that. So that gives me one comma four, four. And that's what you should have got for question D. Right, now let's go and have a look at finding the square and cube roots of decimal fractions. Now what we've been doing for finding the squares and the cubes of decimal fractions is going to help us with this. We're just going to be doing it basically backwards. We're going to be doing the reverse of what we were doing when we we're finding the squares and cubes. Okay, so when you find the square root of a decimal fraction, so like in this example we're going to do over here, we've got the square root of 0, 0, 0,000009. We're finding the square root of that. Okay. Right, let's put this so you can actually see it. There we go. The square root of 0, 0,000009. Okay, so first of all, just like what we were doing when we were doing the squaring and the cubing, we're going to work out the number part of it just by ignoring all of the other zeros and everything. We just have to find the square root of 9. What is the square root of 9? Okay. And that gives us 3. So the square root of 9 is 3. So now we know that in our square root of this whole fraction, we need to have a 3 in it. Okay. Now when we were squaring numbers, we took the number of decimal places and we doubled them. We multiplied it by 2 because we were raising it to a power of 2, which means that we were multiplying two things together that were identical to each other so that they would have the same number of decimal places each other, as each other. So we could multiply the number of decimal places by two. Now when we're square rooting, we're doing the opposite. So if we were uh, going to double the number of decimal places or multiply the number of decimal places by two, when we were squaring, when we square root, we're going to do the opposite. We're going to divide the number of decimal places by two instead. So over here, I have got... 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 decimal places. So to work out the number of decimal places I need in the square root, I'm going to take those decimal places and divide by 2 because this is the square root. You can't see the 2 there, but it is there. So we're dividing by 2. So it's going to be 6 divided by 2 is 3 decimal places. So that's how many decimal places we need to have when we work this out. Over here, I've got three. It's only one digit. I need to have three decimal places in my answer. So I need to have two extra digits. So it's going to be zero comma and then two zeros and then the three, making up my three decimal places. Now, if I were to do this backwards, if I were to square it, remember square rooting and squaring are the opposite of each other, they're the inverse. So now that I've found the square root, if I square this, I should end up with that again. So let's just think about it. If I square 3, I get 9. And when we square a decimal, we need to multiply the number of, decim of decimal places by 2. So 1, 2, 3, I need to multiply that by 2. That's 6. So that means I need to have 6 decimal places. So I would have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 decimal places with a 9 in it. So this is what we get when we square root. We do the same thing, just backwards. We divide by 2 to find out the number of decimal places, and we square root the number part of our decimal fraction. Okay, now let's have a look at one where we're cube rooting. So this one is the cube root of 0, 0,000027. Okay, so because it's a cube root, you can see this number. Remember, when it's a square root, you don't normally see the number over there. I wrote it over there, but normally it's not there. Okay, so you need to know that it's a 2. But if it's any other kind of root, they'll tell you what it is by putting the number over here. So this is a, a 3 because it's a cube root. So first we're going to find the cube root of 27. Okay, now you should know that the cube root of 27 is 3. Okay. Then we need to work out the number of decimal places. So the number of decimal places, we take the number of decimal places we had over here, 
And now because we're finding the cube root, we're going to divide that by 3 instead of 2. So this is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. We're dividing it by 3. And that means that our answer is going to have two decimal places. Okay. So now, the 3 is obviously only one digit. We need to have two digits in our decimal places. So I need an extra digit. So I'm going to fill that in with a 0. So I'm going to have 0, comma, and then 0, 3. Okay. So that means that the cube root of 0 0.000027 is 0, 003. So we work out the cube root of the number part of it, which in this case is 27. That gave us 3. And we divide the number of decimal places by 3 because we're finding the cube root to find out how many decimal places our answer should have. Okay, so now I'm going to give you some that you're going to do for yourself. Here's the first one you're going to do. I'm going to give you 30 seconds to work on this. Okay, so let's go through that. So over here we had the square root of 0 0.64. So first of all, we have to work out the square root of 64. You should know that the square root of 64 is 8. Okay, now the number of decimal places. Over here, I've got two decimal places. So I'm going to take 2. I'm going to divide it by. You can't see it, but there's an imaginary 2 over here. So I'm dividing by 2 because it's the square root. So I'm dividing that by 2. So that means that I need to have one decimal place in my answer. Okay. So now, 8 is one digit, and I need one decimal place. So that's perfect. I don't need to have any extra zeros or anything. I'm just going to have 0, comma, and then 8. Right, so that's what we should have got for question A. Right, next question B. I'm going to give you 30 seconds again to work this one out. Okay, so let's go through that. So first of all, the cube root of 8, you should know, is 2. Okay, so now I need to work out how many decimal places I'm supposed to have. At the moment, I've got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 decimal places. I'm going to divide that by 3 because I'm cube rooting it. That means that I'm going to have 2 decimal places. This is obviously only one digit, so I need one more digit to make up my two decimal places. So that's going to be one extra zero. So I'm going to have zero, comma, and then zero, two, making my two decimal places. So that's what we should have got for question B. Question C. I'm going to give you 30 seconds for this one as well. Okay, so let's go through that. Now for this one, you needed to know that the cube root of 216 is 6. Okay, then we have to work out the number of decimal places. So I've got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. And because I'm taking the cube root, I need to divide that by 3 to find out how many decimal places I need. That means I'm going to have 3 decimal places. Okay, now when you take the cube root of a negative number, 
it is going to be negative, okay? Because if I cube a negative number, I get a negative answer. So if I take the cube root of a negative number, I will have a negative answer as well, okay? So if this is negative for a cube root, I will end up with a negative answer. Then six is obviously only one digit. I need three digits, so I'm going to have zero, comma, and then zero, zero, six, making my three decimal places. So that's what you should have got for question C. Then question D, the last one for today. Here we've got the square root of negative 0 0.0025. You need to be very careful with this one. Okay, I'm going to give you 30 seconds for this question. Okay, so let's go through that last question for today. So first, we are taking the square root of a negative number here. Now, I want you to just quickly have a look back at what we did in this example over here, where we squared a negative number. We got a positive answer. If we squared a positive answer, we also, if we squared a positive number, we also got a positive answer. We didn't ever square anything and get a negative number. It's not possible. You can't get a negative number by squaring, which means that I cannot find a square root of a negative number. There is no square root of the negative number. So this actually doesn't have a real solution. It is imaginary or non-real. If this negative wasn't there, then I would have square root of the 25 and I would have got five. I would have halved the number of decimal places because I'm taking the square root. So it'd be half of four is two. So I would have ended up with zero. So if this was the square root of zero comma zero zero two five without the negative, I would have ended up with zero comma zero five. Half the number of decimal places means it's two and the square root of 25 is five. So that's what it would have got if it was not negative. But because it's negative, there is actually no real answer. It is imaginary because you can't take the square root of a negative number. It doesn't work, at least not in the real number system. Okay, and that is how we find the squares, cubes, and roots of decimal fractions. Now that we've learned the concepts in this lesson, it's important to practice, practice, practice. If you haven't already got the worksheet that goes with this video, you can find it by clicking on the link in the description below. The worksheet comes with an extra exercise full of questions for you to work on to master the concepts covered in this lesson. If you found this video helpful, please hit the like button so that others can benefit from it too. Also be sure to subscribe so that you can easily find my other lessons and hit the bell so that you will get notified about lessons as I upload them.